Now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, apecgo.com. Joining us right now from the Big Mac blog, the Fort Worth Star Telegram, and DFWOT, the uh, e magazine for the iPad. Mac Engel, how you doing, sir? Good, Brian. How are you this afternoon? Well, I'm doing well. Uh, I have to ask you right off the bat um, have we seen the last of Tony Romo? as a favored cowboy in the Dallas Fort Worth area, is he going to go the way of Don Meredith now? That's a good question. Um, you know, he's got a year left. He's got a, another year on his contract. So that gives him a full year and a half to boo the hell out of him. I think, I, I just don't think the Cowboys want to go down that path anymore. I think there's still a lot of conviction that they have the right guy. And, they might. You know, they might. Because the reality of it is, as polarizing as he is, if you go around the league and look at half the teams, you would say, this guy, Romo, is better than that guy. And that's just the reality of it. Is Now, maybe that's a stinging indictment on the other guy, whoever, whoever that is, whether it's Skelton out in Arizona or any number of other players, Brandon Wheaton up in Cleveland, it's just the reality of it. So I think the the Cowboys still think that they've got that guy. Now, what will be the most interesting is that do they try to give him an extension in the off season, as the Texans did with Matt Schaub? Because if they give him an extension, then you know they're really married to him, and that they're really there are no immediate plans to to look elsewhere. But until they do that, you've got to think that they are ready to ride uh, Romo through next season at least. And i got to tell you, Brian, the way things are going and the way that team historically has managed, I think they're going to give him an extension in the offseason. Here's what I, my problem with this, and I have been the biggest Romo defender on the planet, okay, and I've tried, oh. and I just think he's lost the town now. I think that what you're going to start seeing from this point forward is that the fans will come and start booing him like they did Meredith and Craig Morton and in the later days, Danny White. Uh, I just I don't see this being a, a happy ending. I saw the national media turn on him last night. I saw Deion Sanders killing him. I saw Jaworski killing him today. I'm just afraid that it's that the 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 air's out of the balloon now. Uh, you might be right, and and it's one thing that the national media has killed. Listen, Dion's killed him from day one. Dion's always killed him. He killed blood, so he. I'm not listening. I mean, I'm not listening to what Dion says. Or, but other people will. Well, yeah, and then it, but it, it, I think the bigger issue is that it's one thing if he lost the town. It's one thing if he's lost the team. It's quite another if he's lost. It's it's one thing he's lost the national media. It's quite another. If he's lost the team, right? If he's lost the team, then he's screwed. And unlike in 2006, when the Cowboys made the change from Bledsoe to Romo, Bledsoe was losing the team, and Bill Parcells knew it. And he, and he eventually lost the coach. When 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 Bill told him he had lost him, this time it's not like anybody is saying we got to go with Orton. No one is saying that they've got to go with Kyle Orton. What no. people are are saying is that. We got to we got to the hell with Romo, and we got to go find a new guy. And that I think that whole thing was so scarring for Jerry Jones when they tried to find the replacement for Troy Aikman, and they went through Quincy Carter, and Chad Hutchinson, and Drew Henson, and everybody else. I don't think he wants any part of it. I think he. So I, I think that I think that whole thing was so scarring that he is saying to himself, "We got the guy. We just got to get guys around him." He might be right. I don't know. He might be right because we've seen this guy be good but and i'm not saying one thing is better than the other i'm just saying what i think they're gonna as long as he doesn't lose the team and he's not gonna lose the team for at least a little while then this is the way it's gonna go well here's the problem though and this is why i'm asking you these questions because 23 nothing you put your defense in a heck of a hole there at the beginning of the ball game and the defense has played really lights out for almost the entire season uh and that's why you start to see i mean i started having visions of rob ryan doing what buddy did and going and punching jason garrett in the mouth in the middle of the ball game like you know like buddy did uh back when he was with the oilers staff you know i i'm starting oh, when he tried when he tried to punch kevin gilbride yes 
Yeah. I mean, I can see. I mean, it's in the DNA. It's in the family history. So yeah. why wouldn't it happen again? And it's funny you should say that. I thought about that yesterday when they felt, when they turned it over again when the Felix Jones fumble occurred. I thought somebody in that defense is going to go over and punch somebody yeah. on that offense. And you couldn't blame anybody for doing it. It's the thing that I, I go back to this on on Romo or you know he he was asked to pass sixty six times. I agree. Yesterday. That is an awful lot, and it is a recipe. I don't care who you are. That is a recipe for error. I mean, you are in 66 attempts. Something bad is going to happen. Was the first pick his fault? Probably not. Still, he threw it into traffic, though. And at, at some point, you got to know who it is you're throwing to. Well, I mean, and, and that goes that leads to my next issue. And I even Brad Sham even said it yesterday when uh, Dez fumbled the punt. Okay. Yeah, he, he put him on the bench. He did. He he just came out and said it. That's it. Put him on the bench. And, there's and, no reason. There's no, Brian. There's no reason he should be returning punts, with the exception of that one play late with with a minute to go, where you think we we got to try something, we got to do something, so we'll put him back there. At the end of the other point, there's no point in having him back there. I agree. He's, there's no point. And but you I, can't depend on him to run routes either, though. No, you can depend on him to do one thing: run straight and go get it. And that's it. If, if and maybe do a double move, but if it's an in cut, if it's a curl, if it's a post, screw it. You you cannot rely on him his ability his ability to consistently do the right pattern. Now you can ask him just go run straight. We're going to throw a jump ball and go get it. That's it, Mac. That's it. Th- this is the dumbest football team on the planet. Yeah, it's I- pretty dumb. And I'm telling you, that's that's the the thing that that I go back to is. You know, this was, and I wrote it after the Ravens lost. This was a dumb team. And you watched that game yesterday, and they only committed three penalties, right? Yeah. It's good. That's a really impressive <laughs> number, actually. It is, it's amazing for that bunch. Yep. Um, stunning, actually. <laughs> but, but i got to tell you, it, it, you know, whether it's the time management, you know, clock management, whether it's, uh, route wrong route running whether it's fumbling something they are doing everything they can to lose games and the one thing that you cannot say about Jason Garrett Jason Garrett's teams unlike Wade Phillips teams which were which could be equally as stupid yes Jason Garrett's teams are are not quitting they're not quitting they are coming and that, and that that's the only thing that's keeping them in games and why it's so frustrating is that they are they are trying and they're just not they're just not smart enough to get out of their own way and he hasn't lost the team wade lost the team in 2010 when he was fired he had lost the team absolutely he has not jason garrett has not lost the team i know that may not be a good thing but he hasn't lost the team i'm just afraid whatever that's worth I'm afraid it's going to start becoming, you know, hey, we heard noise in the stadium yesterday, but uh, that noise quickly became, you know, like a lynch mob. And, and I'm, I'm really starting to get the feeling it's going to be like the, uh, the Romans and the gladiators when you, you, know, you start pulling for the lions after a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, you know, it's, it's amazing how ugly it's gotten in terms of, I don't know if you could tell, they were booing a breast cancer awareness ad. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> because... Uh, the guy on it was Jerry Jones. Then Jerry, no stay to... out of the commercials, you know? Right, and at this point, you're like, just keep him off the jumbo trying. It's kind of like, you know, the politician who you hate. You don't put him out in front of the game so he can be booed. This is not the time. And, and you know, they were trying, I mean, it's just gotten, so I tweeted this yesterday. You know, Santa Claus would do his bet would be better off not coming to Cowboy <laughs> Stadium at this point. I mean, man, I mean, it's really, it's taken a nasty turn. And, and I just... You know, whatever they think they have in that organization right now, they're fixing to lose this team, the, the whole town, the whole area. They're just fixing to lose this bunch. Well, I think you, this is where you, you kind of have a sense of that, is you're, you're closer to that than I think. Is the TV ratings are, are down so dramatically. Yes. And if it, that was the last thing. That has been the one thing the Cowboys – have always come to is that they have been relevant without winning. And now it, it finally appears as if people are saying, no, I, this is kind of play. This is kind of like the reality television show, like The Hills or Jersey Shore or whatever else that people are finally tiring of and saying, hey, give me a different one. 
you can only be interesting and relevant without winning for so long. And the Cowboys have managed to extend that out despite having playoff success or even really uh, regular season success for almost 15 years. That's amazing. And eventually it was going to catch up to him. And we may finally be seeing signs that it is generally catching up. I, I mean, am I, am I misreading this? Am I overstating this? Uh, and they'll win next week and all will be forgiven? Or, or do you sense the same thing I'm saying here? Uh, no, I think, I think, no. I, I think, I don't think it's just you, Brian. I, I think everybody's starting to see it. And, but that's just it. You mentioned the Atlanta game. Atlanta's undefeated. It would not surprise me at all if Dallas went in there and won the game. You know, get back to 4-4, four and four, be right back on the path for 8-8. Eight and eight. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if they went in and won that game. Now, it doesn't mean they will. Yeah. just wouldn't surprise me if they did, because that's the kind of team this has been. I, I, I really you know, thought, I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I really thought, uh, and I know how you feel about Notre Dame because I feel the same way, but when they when they housed Oklahoma the other night in the fourth quarter and took that ball game, they won, and now they are suddenly relevant in college football again. And I thought when the Dallas came back like they did and took that lead, I started telling myself, you know, we're about to see – the earth turned back on its axis in the right way. The Cowboys are going to suddenly become the Cowboys again, you know, pulling victory out of, you know, sure defeat like they used to do back when Staubach and Danny White were around and, and Notre Dame's winning football games. I thought maybe, maybe now there's going to be some sense of order in this world. And then, of course, the Cowboys did what they do. Well, and that was the difference is when I was watching the Notre Dame-Oklahoma game, the way Notre Dame was the better team. No question. They were the better team throughout. They they were physically dominating. They were faster. They closed on defense. Oklahoma had no room to do anything as the game went on. And when the Cowboys retook the lead, at no point did I think they were going to win that game. Even when they took the lead, I was like, there's too much time. They've The defense has held Manning, a really done a really nice job of holding the Giants, and they've held Manning. But eventually you're going to give up points. It's it's not because that they're bad, just because it's the NFL. You're you, you just you're going to give up points, and they did. Not too many of them, but they gave up enough to make the difference. You can't you can't knock them. God knows you can't knock the Cowboys' defense yesterday. No. But I at no point did I think they were going going to win that game. The um, I mean, and that's just it. When you turn the ball over that many times, you are at you are begging to be perfect the rest of the way. And that the other team just isn't going to do anything. And that's too much to ask in the NFL when you've got another. And the Giants are pretty good. The Giants are good. And unlike the, the Notre Dame-Oklahoma uh, game, Notre Dame was just better. Notre Dame was just better defensively, and they smothered them. As good as the Cowboys' defense was, no one has a smothering defense on that level anymore. There's, it's just teams are just too, teams are just, are just too close. So whereas Notre Dame has reclaimed its you know, God-given right among the tops of college football. The Cowboys do not appear to be doing the same thing in the NFL. Last question, then. What happens now? Uh, well, I don't think anything's going to change for the season. I mean, when, it, there's nothing you can do. I mean, it, you have to believe in, the, in during the season and then get real in the off season. And right now they have no choice but to believe. So I think that obviously they're going to write it out, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see where the Cowboys really are in terms of the direction of changing and building the football team is Romo's contract. Historically, the Cowboys always lock up a guy the year before he can become a free agent. They, do it all, they did it with Barry Church the other day. What was that? Yeah, Barry Church is on IR. What was that? So that's just what they do. They lock guys up before they can become a free agent a year before they can become a free agent. So if Romo has a year left on his deal that would carry him through 2013, if they lock him up in the offseason, then you know that's it, that they're right and that they they are totally committed to this guy for at least two to three more seasons. Wow. And my gut tells me, just based on everything we've seen and read and Jerry's previous experiences, you better get ready. I think they're going to go with him for a couple more years. Man, I don't know if he can take a couple of more years of the kind of abuse he's about to start taking on a regular I, and basis. You know what? That's just it, Brian. And I, I'm wondering if it's getting to a point where he would be better off if he just got if he if he left. It, and the fact that the fact that he he shelved contract negotiations, the Romo side shelved 
negotiations until after the season makes me wonder if he's not thinking the same thing. If it was, if it would just be better for everybody involved if he got out of town, and because I think he could go someplace else and have a pretty nice career. He's gonna he's gonna play probably until he's thirty eight or forty. But I'm I'm beginning to wonder now if if this is kind of one of those relationships where it might just be better off if he went to another team and the Cowboys can move on and look for somebody else. Boy. But I don't think they're going to be the one to initiate it. I think it's going to be Romo. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Mac, thanks very much, man. It's great talking to you. Likewise. Have a great week. All right, buddy. Talk to you later on. Mac Engel okay. from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, DFWOT, on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.